Hey everybody, it's Mark again with another exciting arcade demo. This time I'm going to show you an example of how you can take data from a related table and integrate it with your main web map as part of a pop-up window. So let's uh, get this show on the road. So the best place to start, of course, is in our documentation. So here we are again at the Arcade Expression Language page on the ArcGIS developers website. And we can start diving in and talking a bit about feature sets, since this is the core type of data that we're going to be working with as, uh, as we relate tables uh, together. So let's go into the specific feature set type, and let's kind of walk through what's going on here. So first of all, what is a feature set? It is a connection to a set of features in memory. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a feature set based on the records in the related table. Now, how do you make that feature set? Well, there's three different ways you can do that. You can do it by creating a feature set by an ID or by a name. But what I'm going to do for this particular case is use feature set by portal item. And this is to illustrate that you can do this with ArcGIS Online data or with ArcGIS Enterprise data. Now, it's very important to understand that this particular um, uh, function is only available for two different types of profiles, field calculate and pop-up. So if you do want to work with any related data, it must be in the context of either field calculate or pop-up. Now, if you're using the other two, um, ID or name, you can also use this for attribute rules. But for our case, I'm really uh, interested in working with this as a pop-up, which is good. Now, when you use this particular function, there are five different parameters that we need to worry about. Uh, the portal itself. So we need to identify the actual portal that we're gonna be accessing this data. Now, of course, in our case, I'm using ArcGIS Online, so that portal is gonna be ArcGIS.com, but if you use the enterprise, you'll put in the URL for your particular portal. Then we need to put in some ID. So this is going to be that long ID string that you have to identify in your particular layer that you're working with. And for your layer, if it does have an ID uh, for that particular layer in the feature service, then you need to identify what layer ID you want to work with. There's two optional parameters. You don't need to do this, but it's probably a pretty good idea to put these in. First is a field list. So by default, you're going to get every single field in that related table uh, for you to access in that feature set, which probably isn't a great idea, especially if you have a lot of attributes. So you might want to narrow down what fields you want to work with, and you do that through a list. Finally, we have include geometry. So do you want to include the geometry of your points or lines or polygons into your uh, related table? Now, in our case, I don't need to do this. I don't need to worry about the X and Y coordinate of my points. So I'm going to remove the geometry from my particular um, example. And all of this returns something. So just like with any function, it returns an object. In this case, it's going to return a feature set, which is again, just a bunch of records. And then once you have those records, you can start doing something with it. All right, so let's get to our specific example. And what I've done here is I've, uh, I've created a demo for the uh, ArcGIS Field Apps Seminar, which was held um, in early June. And when I created this particular data set, I built it from um, one of the pre-made templates that are available in ArcGIS Online. In this case, it's the Restaurant Inspections template. And when I ran through that template, it created two layers for me. Oh, two sub-layers within this feature layer. Let's get this correct. First, we have the point layer. So these are our points for the restaurant inspections are taking place. And then we also, it creates a related table, in this case, the inspection history. So what does that look like? Well, for this particular data set, I've kind of narrowed things down and created 13 sort of fake restaurants. So they all have their fake names as well as some unique identifiers and address and information about the inspection itself. So there's a whole bunch of different fields to be able to show what happened in this particular inspection, including a couple of fields that have some numeric values. OK, 
Okay, so this is going to be the number of critical infractions, the number of non-critical infractions, and then a couple of fields to be able to show um, some comments that have been typed in when they do the field inspection. So this is our main layer that we're working with, this restaurant inspections layer, but we also have that related table. So let's take a look at inspection history. And here we have a lot more features because we have a number of different um, inspections that happened in the past. So you can see this one-to-many relationship, right? We have the one restaurant called Sum Sum Chicken, but in this inspection history related table, you'll see that it appears a number of times based on the inspections that have occurred over the last three years. So I want to be able to take this data that we're seeing here in this in inspection history related table and be able to show that with a pop-up of our main data. So how can we do this? Well, I'm going to open up that particular uh, layer that we just saw and open it in the new map viewer. So this is, again, the map viewer has been updated recently. So now this is the default map viewer that you're working with. And we have our points, our 13 restaurants that we have here. We symbolize them of whether they passed or failed. And we added little labels in there with Arcade to be able to show them in multiple lines. All right, so we're going to concentrate on the pop-ups. So I'm going to open up Configure Pop-up. And as you can see right now, we have our enabled uh, pop-ups uh, already turned on. We have our title, but we've also included three uh, types of, uh, of content within a pop-up. So I have a little bar chart that's going to show those numeric values of critical and non-critical infractions. Also got an attachment here. So if you want to see a photo of each of these, we created some silly little photos for, uh, for our different examples here. But what I'm interested in is this text. So I'm going to take information from my restaurant that I'm currently looking at, as well as the related data, and put them into this text block. Now, of course, in the interest of time, I've pre-built these expressions that we're going to use for this particular pop-up. So I've got four arcade expressions that I built, and we're going to feature those into that text block. Um, and a lot of these are really simple. So we're not going to go too deep into these. The first is, uh, the grade and making them uppercase just to stylize it. So it's either a pass or a fail. Do I want all uppercase pass or all uppercase fail? That's basically what we're doing here. We're just using that upper function uh, to be able to make that pass or fail uh, appear in all uppercase. Second one is calculate score. And with calculate score, I'm going to take those two numeric values that I showed, the non-critical and the critical, and I'm going to calculate the score on the fly. So we're gonna start with a base of a perfect score of 100. Each non-critical infraction, we're gonna take five points off. If there's a critical infraction, we're gonna take 25 points off, and we're gonna calculate that score on the fly. Once again, this is a typical arcade thing, being able to do uh, math on the fly. Third, let's talk about date difference. So each of these inspections has a date that is recorded. And all I want to do with this is just take that date, and instead of just displaying the date, I want to calculate a date difference. So this date difference function will be able to calculate the difference between the current date and then the date of the inspection and break it down by the number of days. So again, that's all we're doing here. We're just going to, instead of uh, just putting in the generic date, you know, June, blah, whatever year, we're going to actually calculate the, the, the number of days since the last inspection. Okay, this is what we're coming for for this particular demo. This is the exciting part. And that is this fourth expression that I built called inspection history. Okay, so let's walk through this particular block of code step-by-step. Step. So remember, I'm going to use this feature set by portal item function that I showed when we looked at the help. And it had five parameters. The first parameter is the portal. So again, the portal is something that I am creating in a variable above. It is just ArcGIS.com since I'm using ArcGIS Online. And again, if you have an enterprise that you're working with, ArcGIS Enterprise, you can put in the URL for that enterprise portal and use that instead. The second is the um, ID, right? So the ID of the feature layer that we just looked at. So there's the long block string that we had there. 
And then what layer do I want to use for my related table? Remember, where there's two layers that was created, there was one for the main data and then there's one for the related data. That's layer one, and that's what I'm going to put in this particular parameter. The fourth thing is what fields do I want? So as you saw, there was a lot of fields in my particular feature layer. I don't need all of them. Probably the only things I need are the inspection date, I need the grade, I need the critical and non-critical infractions. I don't really need the establishment name, but I'll just throw it in there just for fun. It's not gonna be, be too big of a deal. But what we wanna to try to avoid here is putting all of our fields into our related table. That just bogs things down, slows things down, it's going to create a bunch of data that we don't need or use. And then that last argument is include geometry. So do I want to include the geometry or not? Yes or no. Again, I don't need the X and Y values here, so we'll just make that false. All right, so we are now going to access a feature set, and it's going to create that feature set and store it in this variable called inspection history. So now we've got a bunch of records from that related table. Now what do we want to do? Now I want to be able to create that tie between our main data and our related data. And we can do that through a common attribute. In this case, I chose the establishment name. So we're going to go into our main data and for that, establish, uh, for that establishment name, we'll use that as our field that we want to access from our main data. And then our filter statement is going to make that tie between the establishment name and then the, uh, the for, for, for our two, two tables. Now, I'm going to make a confession here. That's probably not a smart thing to do, right? There might be two McDonald's or many McDonald's in this particular area. So the establishment name isn't unique. But of course, you might want to use a unique identifier in your database. Maybe you have a permit number or an inspection number or something that's unique to each restaurant. That's what you really want to use. I'm just lazy. Full, full confession there. All right. So now that we have this particular uh, filter that we want to use based on a common attribute, now here's where we'll actually make that related data based on that statement. Okay, so based on the two common uh, fields, the establishment name for each of those tables. I'm now going to filter my records based on this. Okay, so what I've really done is I've taken a feature set and now I'm going to work with this feature set based on this filter. Now, now that I have this related data, I'm going to do a quick uh, sort. So we do an order by, and I'm just going to order this by the, um, by the inspection date. Okay, so I'm going to go to that related data table and go and find the inspection date field, and I'm going to sort them in descending order. And that's just for display purposes, right? I want to go from most recent to least recent. Now we get to start building this string. Okay, now we're going to build one big string, and that's what's going to be returned to us, a big, huge string. Now, for this particular string, I'm going to start with it as, of course, blank but I'm going to start building it up. Okay? And I'm going to build it up based on two different expressions. The first expression is to go into the main table. Okay, so this is going to be our main feature layer and be able to extract first the date. Okay, so I'm going to get the inspection date of that particular feature and I'm going to format it in a specific way so we get the, uh, the, the, the name of the, the month and then the date and then the year. And we're just going to convert that into text. So it'll be nice and uh, simple to be able to display it as text. All right, and then we'll we just add in an extra little string here to show that the next feature that we're going to display is the grade, whether it passed or failed. So we're going to go to that particular feature and we're going to use a when statement or a when function to be able to say, okay, if the grade is listed as A, then we're going to pass the string, uh, we're, we're going to send the string pass. If it is a conditional pass, then we'll make it, um, uh, uh, be, uh, we'll, we'll display that. And then for our third one, if it's a fail, then we're going to display that as fail. So a when statement is sort of the perfect example of when you hit that fork in the road and there's many different forks you can go down. Here we've got our three forks, pass, conditional pass, or fail. 
Now, if it doesn't meet any of those, then we have our fourth um, argument, our fourth parameter, and that is what is going to happen if it doesn't meet any of these three, if it's not an A or B or C. So then just display no grade. All right, well, we're going to add in another string just to say that the next part of our line is going to be showing the score. And remember that score is derived on the fly. So this is the same expression that we saw before, where we're going to start with the number 100, we're going to knock off five points every non-critical infraction. We're going to knock off 25 points for every infraction. And we're just going to display that as text. And then finally, we're going to put in that constant to be able to put in that new line. So we're going to basically display the current inspection, what its grade was, what its score was. Now we're going to get into the related table for the remaining uh, lines of this particular string. So now we're going to go into our particular related data that's been sorted. And we're going to go through each one in a for loop. So remember what for loops are, right? For loops are going to start at the top of the pile, and it's going to go through each record one by one and produce a result. In this case, each one of those records, each one of those uh, records in our pile is going to be from our related table. And we're going to do exactly the same things we did up here. Okay, so we're going to use the exact same code to be able to perform this. And in reality, it's probably smart to maybe have a function to do all of this, but I'm lazy again. But the same idea, the same principle goes, but instead of going to our main feature, we're going to go to our feature that's being iterated through in our for loop. So it's going to start with our first feature, do the processing of our string, and then it's going to go to the next feature, do the processing on that string, and on and on it goes for all the related records that apply. And then at the very end, we are going to, of course, our final um, line of code in any arcade block or any arcade expression is what's going to get returned. So what's going to get returned is that big old pop string. Okay, so that is our, our, our main string that we're going to return. If there is nothing in here, it actually turns out to be blank, which in our case it won't, but if it does, it's a good idea to have it as a default value, as no history. So if this becomes empty, then it'll just default to no history. Okay, so that's a really long explanation of what I did. Let's see the actual result. So I'm gonna go to that text block and just do a quick little edit to see what it looks like here. And I'm going to take those four expressions that we have and display them within the text block of this pop-up. So I'm going to take that pass or fail. That's going to be the first line. The second line is going to be what the score was based on that um, expression with the score. Then it's going to take that date difference and put that in as when the last inspection occurred. It's also going to go into the results field and the actions field to put in the block of text of what happened in the most recent inspection. So that's there as well. And then here's our last little line here in our text block. That's expression three. That is the block of, from, from the expression with all the related data. So after all of this, we finally get to enjoy the fruits of our labor by clicking on a feature. And here's what gets generated. So there is our Pass fail, there's our score, nice and bold. There's the number of days since the last inspection. There's our two uh, string values for comments. And look at this. This is the holy grail. Taking that first record, that's the most recent one. That's from the actual feature letter that we show. Show the date, show the grade, show the score. And then all of these are from the related table with the same restaurant name. And again, show the date show the grade, show the score, all sorted in order based on date from descending order. And yeah, at the bottom of this, we also have our little chart to show the number of infractions. And we also have our um, attachment, which is a, just a graphic of that particular feature. So this is pretty sweet, right? Being able to utilize that related data based on a common attribute. In our case, it's going to be that um, that restaurant name and be able to have all of that related data show up into a pop-up through a relate. All right, so there you have it, our long-winded example of how you can use Arcade 
with related data. Now, if you want to learn more about all of this, of course, there's the documentation that you should always check out. There's a lot of great information there, as well as blogs, etc. But I do want to point out one specific resource, and that is on the Esri community website. If you go to the ArcGIS online section and in the blog, there is a great article that you can uh, search that will outline exactly the same steps that I went through in more detail. So definitely check out that blog if you want to dig in deeper into what we did in this particular demo. All right, that's it for now. Until then, we'll see you later. Peace.